all of these administrative burdens that do not make our population better, do not make our quality better, do, do not make me better as a physician. What are they doing there other than making a few people very rich? I dropped my board, I shouldn't say board, uh, Academy, American Board uh, Certification, ADP Board Certification, probably about seven or eight years ago after going, I, I when I first finished my residency, there was a time lapse where you had to complete a certain amount of years before you were even eligible to sit for the boards. Mm -hmm. I had to wait two years to take my written exams, and then I applied to take my orals, and because of where they were being given, I elected to postpone it for a year. And shortly thereafter, they changed their policy, and when I did take my boards, it was already past the point where I would have been grandfathered. So every seven years, I had to go through the whole rat race of spending another thousand dollars plus doing maintenance of certification and all that and make to maintain my boards. And after going through it three times, I said, no more. I said, I'm not going to keep subsidizing an organization that is only interested in money making. Well, it has a cool plural a dashboard with lots of technology. Has to be paid somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Feed the beast. <laughs> yeah, it's all about a board that makes a lot of money off the backs of hardworking clinicians. And that is disgusting. You know, how originally. What, what? I say we're at an inflection point. I think people that are much smarter than me, Dr. Hackle, say that we are at a crisis moment in pediatrics. What needs to be done? to build out workforce capacity and attract young, talented people into the specialty so that children in every community from every walk of life have access to care in the U.S. Has to do with making it attractive as a specialty, not just because, first of all, there are a certain number of people who are going to go into it no matter what because of this, this desire to do good and be a good person and to make like the challenge of being a little bit of everything, the gastroenterologist, the neurologist, the simple surgical stuff, the just having the relationship with a family, those are all key factors why people go into pediatrics. Then there is the financial issue. And as long as it's a, not something that is at the top of necessarily of the payment scale, but it's definitely in the middle of the scale, it will attract people. And we're far from that. Yeah. And you alluded to this before. I don't regret having become a pediatrician or a physician. If I do I, for the record. But there is a tremendous price that we all paid for this privilege. We gave up our 18 to 30 year old selves in the pursuit of this career. No amount of money will replace a young herb. I cannot relive that life. And that sacrifice needs to be compensated with a stable job that's competitive, that allows me to live in the community that I want to live in an upper middle class existence. Because if you're going to pay me less than the salesperson for Oracle across the street from my house, who partied through college and started working when she was 22. And I'm not even talking about the investment banker in Manhattan yeah. <laughs> or the lawyers that are now demanding between a thousand to $2,500 an hour at the big law firms. Why should I sacrifice my youth to make a little more than what the UPS driver makes? Why? 
because I'm stupid. When the police and cities make more than we do, it's absurd. There is when education is not for, uh, valued by the system, you have a failed system. Right. 